Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. Romans 1, 16 and 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The Apostle Paul's bold declaration in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel, is a significant statement. Therefore, an understanding of what he meant by this is critical. In Romans 1 and the verse 1 and following, the Apostle Paul reminds us that he was called by God to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Paul says that the gospel is God's power for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. The Apostle Paul declares that the gospel is God's salvific power. Here are about five amazing things about the saving power of God. One is that God initiates it. It is God who initiates this. Second, it is executed by his power. And Robert Mounts points out that the statement is an acknowledgement of the dynamic quality of the message. In the proclamation of the gospel, God is actively at work in reaching out to the hearts of people. The gospel is God telling of his love to wayward people. It is not a lifeless message, but a vibrant encounter for everyone who responds in faith. What's really just discourse is little more than words and ideas about religious subjects. Not so the gospel. The gospel is God at work. He lives and breathes through the declaration of his redemptive love for people. To really hear the gospel is to experience the presence of God. Third, the gospel is by faith. The gospel does not negate a person's free will, says Mount, but it is God's power for everyone who believes. God does not force himself upon people against their will for the power of the gospel to effect salvation. The hearer must respond in faith. Our faith is by no way meritorious, but without faith, there can be no individual salvation. And four, it is for the world. Salvation, the one overwhelming necessity of perishing man, says one writer. This revealed in the gospel message, and that message so owned and honored by God as to carry in the proclamation of it God's own power to save every soul that embraces it, Greek and barbarian, wise and unwise. Paul noted here the universality of the gospel, the universal nature of salvation by faith is here stated. And he added that it was first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. Robert Mounts points out that historically God worked through his people, Israel. They were first. Now the message goes out to everyone, everywhere. The other thing that is pointed out in this particular passage is the fact that Salvation is by faith from first to last. Loved ones, our salvation is initiated by faith, as we said earlier on, but it is also sustained by faith. It is by faith from first 
to last from beginning to end it is by faith so the gospel you have received is amazing God has in Jesus Christ reached out to you and to me and offered his saving grace let us treasure that today and praise our Heavenly Father for his great love for us let us be grateful for the ability of the gospel to transform our lives ah my friends and not only ours but anyone who believes in Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. Let us share the gospel, therefore. Let us tell others of the gospel message so that God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may transform their lives as he did ours. We want to see the lives of our friends and relatives, associate neighbors, and those in our social networks transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, just as our lives were transformed. And today is a good day to do that. Should you need further instructions in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. And if you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. Someone is standing by to support you right now. If you have not yet secured your copy of my book, Six Practices of Effective Leadership, today is your day to do so. You could get your copy on Amazon and the link is conveniently provided for you in the description below. If you're in Ontario, you could pick up your copy at the West Toronto Church of God at 1655 Wilson Avenue in North York. And if you're in Jamaica, you could pick up your copy at the, the Montego Bay, Mandeville, Waltham Park, Sterling Castle, New Testament Churches of God, or at the bookshop of the head office of the New Testament Church of God located in Roden Spen, Old Harbor. We would love to hear from you today how core leadership services may journey with you in your church or local organization to raise up leaders for greater and for future leadership responsibilities. It has been an absolute pleasure journeying with some churches and some corporate organizations over the recent months and we look forward to hearing from you because we would love to partner with you so drop us a line today and we'd be delighted to be a partner with you may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen thank you for listening to the noonday meditation with pastor wayne vernon please forward this study to your friends your relatives associates neighbors and all those persons in your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom.